Welcome back to an introduction to basic concepts of maintenance and reliability. In this lecture, we are going to discuss what is an asset criticality analysis and why is it important. An asset criticality analysis is simply a study and evaluation of plant equipment that answers what are the most critical assets or equipment in the plant. A natural question is why do you need to do this analysis? The reason for conducting criticality analysis on equipment is that when you are implementing a reliability program in your plant or any other advanced maintenance program, you need to maintain a lot of record and metrics. For example, you'll need to maintain its mean downtime, mean time between failures, mean time to repair, mean time between maintenance and more. You also have to conduct a detailed analysis on individual equipment, most importantly, the failure modes and effects analysis or FMEA, which we will discuss in a future lecture separately. All this effort cannot be immediately applied on all the equipment present in the plant. Maintenance department will get baffled and overloaded with information if you try to do all that at once. Therefore, what is needed to be known is what are the most critical equipment in your plant or facility, and then you implement the reliability program or any advanced maintenance program on those most critical equipment first. This is where the criticality analysis comes in. It allows you to shortlist the equipment or assets over which you will direct your future focus and efforts in implementing an advanced maintenance program. A best practice is to apply an advanced maintenance program on the top 20% of your most critical assets or equipment. In fact, how many systems are covered by criticality analysis expressed as a percentage is a metric in itself. In this way, criticality analysis is a precondition and a precursor to application of a reliability program or any other advanced maintenance program. The next important question is how criticality analysis is performed. In its simplest form, criticality analysis starts with listing all the equipment and their identification on one side. Then for each equipment, you assess the failure probability. This probability of failure can be worked out by using any advanced probabilistic analysis or mathematical modeling technique, or it could simply be based on the failures per year recorded historically for the equipment. Then for each equipment, you assess what will be the impact of its failure. This impact can be expressed in the form of financial loss that a company experiences, for example, production loss, or it can be expressed in the form of an impact rating given after considering the safety impact of failure or maybe operational impact. Finally, you get a priority number for each of your equipment based on the product of its failure probability and its failure impact. This analysis will give a high priority number to equipment if it has a relatively high probability of failure and whose failure impact is also high. 
This is a simple version of criticality analysis and organizations can include or exclude factors in it based on what they consider important and relevant to their own company or their own industry. Similarly, some standard formats and procedures are also available if a company would like to follow a structured framework. For example, a good reference is the US military standard MIL STD 1629 that is based on defining a standard procedure for conducting failure modes, effects, and criticality analysis. It gives a complete template for carrying out criticality analysis along with the standard procedure. So if a company doesn't want to develop its own analysis procedure and would like to follow a standard, such standards are also available. With this, we conclude our discussion. See you in the next lecture.